Good to see you again, TV family. Back out of here Tuesday, 29th day of October, 2024. It's one week from Election Day, and I can tell you that for sure. It is the 29th of October. I am Dan Coons. Thanks for starting your day with us. We have some high clouds, 39 degrees, but for the most part, it's clear in our viewing area. Going to have a lot of sunshine today, and then things are going to change tomorrow, specifically late in the afternoon and the early evening hours. Here comes the rain. Pretty active frontal system is going to fly through. Normally, the Cascades protects us. We're in the rain shadow when things come in from the west and work their way to the east. But this is strong enough and has enough moisture associated with it. It's going to overcome the rain shadow, and we are going to get some rain. Uh, the timeline will let you know in just a couple of minutes, but get ready for some rain in the valley and some snow in the upper elevations. That all begins tomorrow on Wednesday, and it looks like a pretty wet Halloween to boot. We'll have some news for you as well. Sports. My Yankees are on the premises. We lost again. We'll talk briefly about the World Series. Mostly it'll be local sports because that's what we do around here. And speaking of local, the, act, the, uh, the big um, panel discussion is tonight. So I wanted to give the folks at Sustainable NCW a little more love. They're going to have a panel discussion at the Pibus Public Market, specifically inside the local Televent Center. It is tonight. It begins at 6.30. It's all about composting and recycling and what you can do to cut down on what you're doing to make waste management a profitable business, so to speak. From Sustainable Wenatchee, the uh, Executive Director Marlene Farrell and the President of the Board, Rick Edwards, are back. We'll have that for you in the back half of the program. And we begin our tour right now at two minutes after the hour with what we have to see, even though we are ways now from sunrise. Sunrise this morning, 741, sunset 547, 10 hours and six minutes of daylight. But of course, with daylight saving time coming to an end on Sunday, we go back to standard time. It'll be light by, uh, by this time next week. It'll be in the daylight. I think sunrise will be about an hour earlier starting next week, but eventually, of course, it'll be dark when the show begins and pretty much when the show ends. That's just the nature of things. Good morning to the Valley. Good morning to our friends at Rocky Reach Dam and the Baker Flats Industrial Park and Lake Antiat. Again, clouds are hanging around, but they're not gonna hang around very long. Kind of similar to what we had yesterday, only a little more sunshine today than yesterday. Good morning to our friends just to the north of the Wenatchee Valley. Uh, considerably farther north by a number of miles is the Billy Goat Camera. A stunning view there. Looks like they don't have nearly the cloud cover up there that we have down here. In Omac, let me check here at 34 degrees. The cold spot right now is Moses Lake is at 27. That is 12 degrees cooler than we are. We're at 39 right now, but they have no cloud cover out in the Columbia Basin. So all the, all the, all the cities out there, uh, Moses Lake, Afreda, Quincy, they're all pretty chilly right now. And camera four, up to Lake Wenatchee. And we have that little phenomenon that happens when the air temperature and the water temperature differentiate enough. You get the glow clouds and the fog. They will be burning off as the day progresses. Remember yesterday at this time when we showed this photo, this live shot, uh, there was snow on top of a dirty face. There isn't any more. Got three slides to show for you <clears throat> from the National Weather Service. Here we go. Talked about the frontal system. Going to start rolling in tomorrow morning. It'll be here by early tomorrow afternoon. So it's also packing some colder air, colder air and wetter air. So widespread light rain, nothing really heavy in the lowlands, but everybody is going to get some rain uh, throughout our viewing area, probably from about noon tomorrow all the way through Friday morning. And the snow level is going to be at pass level for the upper passes. Stevens Pass is going to get about three to five inches of snow. Washington Pass on the North Cascades Highway, perhaps a little more than that. Lookout Pass is going to get a rain snow mix, SI-90 in the Idaho Panhandle. We're dealing with rain, and it is knocking on our doorstep. As far as the six to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, this takes us into next week. Uh, this is November 3rd through the 7th. So you can see we're leaning slightly below normal for temperatures. So we're talking probably mid 40s. Again, this is for next week. This is the long term forecast. That's the temperature outlook. As far as your precipitation outlook, it's probably going to be right around normal for this time of the year. And this is supposed to be kind of a wet period for us, even though we live in a desert. We should usually get a little bit of rain or even some light snow is not out of the question in late October, early November. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. So precipitation about normal as far as temperatures slightly below normal. That's down the road. Here's the next seven days from the National Weather Service. Again, sunshine today, 
no big deal at all. High of 58. For the record, we hit 56 yesterday, but it was a little chilly yesterday morning, so we'll get up to right around 57, 58, right around there. Increasing clouds tonight, 34 for the overnight low. You're going to wake up tomorrow with clouds. By the time we get to noon, we're looking at rain. The snow level tomorrow morning when you get up, 2,200 feet. So there could be some snow accumulations in the passes and maybe even the foothills of the Wenatchee Valley. The snow level will go up as Wednesday progresses, but we're going to get widespread rain for everybody. And as I mentioned before, it's a cold front, so only 48. 36 for the overnight low Wednesday night. Rain, by the way, on Wednesday night. Thursday, rain pretty much all day. Off and on, hit and miss, light rain all day on Halloween and right up until midnight on Halloween night. So your ghosts and goblins are going to get wet and it's going to get chilly. Look at the overnight lows, mid-30s. Friday, we have a slight chance of a little bit of light rain. Snow level will be above the pass. We'll even have some sub breaks on Friday at a high of 49 and things are pretty quiet for the weekend. Partly sunny on Saturday, about 51. Mostly sunny Sunday, about 52. So we're going to be right around normal when we get to the weekend and get into Monday of next week. But uh, this is, as you can see, that 58 degree mark. We're not going to see that for a while. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we have your Tuesday morning news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Live channel. Enjoy the sounds of summer from your very own pool and spa. Blue Lagoon is now scheduling pool installations for this summer. Call today to schedule a free consultation for a custom San Juan fiberglass pool. And let the experts at Blue Lagoon handle the construction, installation, and regular maintenance. Turn your boring backyard into vacation paradise this summer with industry-leading San Juan pool. No need to go off the deep end. Relax knowing you're in great hands with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. The family at the Epladolin want to help your loved one feel at ease in their new home environment. Epladolin offers beautiful one bedroom and studio apartments. Residents enjoy three delicious home style meals a day, laundry service, housekeeping service, and encouragement to make themselves cozy in their new home. Epladolin welcomes your family to come and visit their family. Epladolin, independent and assisted living. They make the complicated easy for you. Call today for a tour. I'm Keith Gaynor, running for your next 12th District State Senator. It's been a privilege to serve you the past six years in the House of Representatives. I believe public safety is a critical issue that affects all of Washington. This should be one of our highest priorities. Washington families are struggling. Housing, food, and gas prices are severely affecting our budgets. We need to find better ways to support our families. Together, we can build a better Washington. Medicare annual election period is here, and the rumors are true. Health Alliance and Assurance Northwest Medicare Advantage plans are not available beginning January 1st, 2025. Now there are two new Medicare Advantage plans that will be replacing them. But to quickly answer many of your questions, go to our website and click on Plan Termination. You can also come to one of our sales and education meetings. You don't have to be a current client. We'll be providing everyone a folder with step-by-step -step instructions on finding a new plan for next year. Few high clouds, 39 degrees. We'll have sunshine most of the day today. We'll be mid 50s anyway. That frontal system we've been talking about starts rolling in tonight. We'll start rain. We'll start seeing some rain tomorrow afternoon about noon, and it'll rain off and on really right until the weekend begins. It's nine minutes after the hour. The East Ranchy drug dog Maverick is earning his paycheck, whatever that may be, for the local law enforcement community. Chief Rick Johnson says that a Wenatchee police officer performed a traffic stop at the intersection of Russell and Monroe and arrested the driver, 51-year-old Miguel Tameo, after discovering that he had an outstanding felony warrant. The officer found a note in Tameo's pocket that mentioned exchanging drugs for money. Well, Maverick arrived and alerted his handler near the driver's side door. A search warrant for the vehicle allegedly yielded 500 fentanyl pills, an ounce of fentanyl powder, an ounce of methamphetamine as well as an unlawfully possessed firearm. Tomeo is now being held at the Chelan County Regional Jail on a $100,000 bail. Two juvenile pedestrians were struck and injured Sunday evening by a motorist. The Grand County Sheriff's Office said the two youths were struck by a vehicle at about 7 p.m. in the 8500 block of Road T Northwest. That's about five miles southwest of Quincy. Deputies say the two pedestrians were walking on the shoulder of the rural road 
when they were struck. EMTs brought them to Confluence Health Central Campus in Wenatchee for treatment. The cause of the accident is under investigation. The condition of the two juveniles unknown as of this morning. There's a cougar out there hanging around the Leavenworth National Fish Hatchery, and people should know about it, obviously. Hikers near the intersection of Icicle Road and East Leavenworth Road have reported spotting the big cat, moving parallel to them as they use the hatchery trail system. Cougars, of course, are not uncommon in the upper Wenatchee Valley, and hatchery managers are warning visitors to be aware of their surroundings. Attacks on humans rarely happen, but steps when you encounter a cougar, you face the animal, you stand straight up, Make yourself appear larger, and whatever you do, don't run. Pets should also keep a leash to avoid a pet should also be kept on a leash, so you won't attract or antagonize a cougar looking for lunch. Last week, NCW Life published a months long investigation into allegations of racial and gender based harassment at Wenatchee Valley College. Six women who had previously worked or currently work at the college told us that there have been inactions by leadership to address these issues on campus. Some of the women mentioned in the report went to the Human Resources Office for help, but said they didn't get the, resport, they didn't get the support that they wanted from the department. Here's a clip from that special. If you did go forward to HR, um, most likely nothing was going to happen, or worse, um, you would then end up being um, treated differently because you had come forward and so there was absolutely no trust in HR. It, it got to the point where people just wouldn't take things to HR. HR of course does have the, and the administration, they have the ability to say, huh, wow, that's the fourth complaint that so-and-so has said about someone. Maybe let's investigate. Along with the Title IX coordinator, college campuses are required to have Title IX investigators. I was a Title IX investigator and I saw the ways in which um, certain complaints that would come forward would get attention, others wouldn't. The HR director would kind of pick and choose whether it was somebody who they, you know, liked and supported versus somebody who, who they didn't. Um, instead of just following protocol and the rules, there were times when um, an investigation was done and instead of coming at it from a place of let's figure out what actually happened. It was coming at it from a place of, oh, I know this guy and he's really nice and he would never, you know, do something like that. It felt like the primary goal of HR was to smooth over and make it appear that they hadn't done anything wrong, um, as opposed to, you know, try to find out what happened and, and take care of it. With Dr. Harrison, um, you know, coming to be our new president, uh, we were really hopeful that he would be more engaged and would take more of a leadership role as far as making decisions at the college. But that hasn't really panned out. You know, it's like we all work so hard to serve our students, but then we're not being supported or served or protected. Um, by our offices, our administration. I think the public needs to know that the college is in crisis and that many of their community members who were longtime employees have chosen to leave. And I think it's so important that we don't just sweep that under the rug and let people say it's because um, they had other opportunities or they wanted to do something else. No, many of us never wanted to leave the college and it was heartbreaking for us to do so. I, I want it to become a safe place. There are some people that need some discipline to happen, right? We, they need to know that what they're, tr what they're doing is not acceptable and in a real way. I feel like the community, if they understood, they would make the college have to be more responsible. That would be my hope, right? Like, I want the college to exist for these students. I want the college to be a place where people can come in and, you know, earn a degree and get a better job. Well, all of those things. I, I wanted to be able to tell this, the, the families that I know, yes, send your kid to the college. And at the time I could not, I could not recommend them to send them to the institution that I was working in. Cause I wouldn't have felt okay recommending that to someone, um, and then knowing that their kids wouldn't have a good experience. 
So the community needs to know so that the college can be accountable. There is enough people working there that can make the college a great space. And it starts with accountability. And finally, students from Chelan's FFA program got a thrill last week at the Agriculture Organization's National Convention. It was held in Indianapolis. The Chelan FAA group had a chance to meet and speak with Temple Grandin, a pioneer in humane livestock management. Grandin was the keynote speaker for the convention. He's also a major advocate for people living with autism. The Chelan FFA club sent, spent months fundraising so they could travel to Indianapolis, but they didn't have any idea they'd actually get a chance to meet a hero in the field of livestock agriculture. For his own part, Grandin said neurodivergent people like herself have an essential place in the agricultural sciences. Once I heard that, there were tears coming out of my eyes. I first heard about her about like probably seven years ago and ever since then I thought like she's an amazing person, she's an animal scientist and I want to work with animals, I want to be a vet and so really getting to meet her, it's kind of like a dream that I've had and doing that, it really, it's really cool. <laughs> It's amazing how through with especially like growing up as like a woman in agriculture and that kind of thing was kind of strange and new and interesting, especially someone with autism and like severe autism. And it's amazing to see her and that's really inspiring. So we do a lesson on uh, animal behavior and there's no better uh, means to learn about animal behavior than learning about Temple Grandin because it helps them again, be able to learn that there are so many different avenues and so many different options for their futures. Um, she's a really inspiring individual. Get exposed to enough different things so you can figure out what you are good at. Can't emphasize that enough. Find out what you're good at. You might try something else and go, oh, I hate that. It's also important to find that out, but get out, try lots of different things. When I was out in the meat plants and out on the ranches, we were building things, about 20% of the people I worked with were either autistic, dyslexic, or ADHD, and they were inventing all kinds of equipment. We need their scouts. It's that simple. And that is the news on this Tuesday. If you're interested to find out what's going on around here, and we think you do, or else we wouldn't do a newscast, we have a newscast. The NCW Life Evening News at 5, 6, and 10 on television. That's when we air it on TV. But, of course, that doesn't necessarily fit into everybody's schedule, which is why we put our newscast up and running on the web. Right around 5 o'clock, you can check out the evening news on our homepage, our Facebook page, our YouTube page. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to find. And if there's something out there you think is newsworthy, you send us an email. News at ncwlife.com. Sports is next. You're watching a Tuesday edition of Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Want to stay up to date on the latest news in the area? Tired of paying for your news? Download the NCW Life app now. No subscriptions necessary. Get news, weather, sports, and more live as it happens. Available for iPhone and Android in the App Store. Local news at your fingertips. Don't miss the stories that matter to you. Stay connected. Download the NCW Life app now. Since 1932, Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Seneca's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Seneca today, www.campfirencw.org. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. 
Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Sports at 20 minutes after the hour. Oh, Freddie Freeman, stop hitting home runs. I'm speaking for Yankee fans everywhere. I'm a Yankee and you know all that. Dodgers doubled up the Yankees 4-2, Game 3 of the World Series. Last night, Walker Buehler pitched very good. Freddie Freeman has hit five home runs in his last five World Series games, dating back to 2021. The Dodgers can take home the Commissioner's Trophy with a victory tonight. First pitch in Game 4, 5.05 on Fox. Big road trip for the Seattle Kraken. They're going to be on the road for the next week and a half with five games and starts tonight. They'll be in Montreal to take on the Canadians. As you can see, they are really evenly matched. Fourth teams, 4-4-1 four, four and one on the year, and with nine points a pop, that game will start at 4 o'clock on Kong. Prep soccer schedule in the Big Nine. It's the last week, of course, of regular season action. When actually has already clinched the Big Nine regular season championship, they will host the District 5 uh, championship game uh, on November 7th at the Apple Bowl. they still got work to do. Eastmont will take on the Panthers on the east side of the river in soccer at 7 p.m. Sunnyside welcomes West Valley. Eisenhower has Moses Lake coming to nine in Big Nine soccer. For the smaller schools, it is playoff time. In the District 5 two-way prep soccer tournament, uh, it's win or go home for these teams. Quincy will be at East Valley at 5 o'clock. Same time for number six seed Freda at number three Sela. It's at this point, if you lose, you're done. So go Quincy and go Tigers. A couple other games on the prep soccer schedule tonight. Cascade welcomes OMAC at 6 o'clock in Caribou Trail League action. Cashmere is at Zilla. Also at 6 o'clock. Prep volleyball. Eastmont, the volleyball team, gets on the bus and goes to this side of the river to take on the Wadanchi Panthers at 7 o'clock. And in the NCAA Live Channel, we'll have that for you tonight. Again, the Panthers have already clinched the regular season Big Nine title. Eisenhower will be at Moses Lake at 7, and Sunnyside is at West Valley, also at 7 o'clock. Smaller schools, Cashmere at Zilla at 6.30. Liberty Bell will be at Manson at 7 o'clock. Tenaskin at Okanagan at 5.30. And yes, we will have volleyball. Tonight, Eric Grandstrom courtside, the Eastmont Wildcats, Wenatchee Panthers. That gym will have a lot of people in it. And if you don't want to go, you can watch it right here on the NCAA channel. It will be on our regular television channels, also streaming on our Facebook page. 6.50 pregame, 7 o'clock is when they'll get going tonight, right here on the NCAA Life channel. And those are just some of the games that people are playing at 20, just about 23 minutes after the hour. Happy National Cat Day. I used to have a cat, used to have a couple of cats, don't anymore. For reasons I don't know, I liked my cats. They were pretty cool. Scientists believe that cats were domesticated about 10,000 years ago. They've been hanging around. Who domesticated who? That's what I want to know. Cats can leap up to six times their length. Yes, they're good. They're good leapers. Approximately 40% of cats are either left pod or right pod. The other 60% are ambidextrous. I did not know that. Cats will not eat food that they don't like, even to the point of starvation. That's remarkable. Don't forget now, when a dog wags their tails, they're happy to see you. When a cat wags their tails, they're not happy with you at all. So stay away from that. Uh, cats have uh, caused the extinction of 34 different bird and animal species. They killed them. They don't exist anymore because of cats. Uh, yeah, that's hard to believe. In the absence of fresh water, cats can survive on salt water. Very few land roaming animals can do that. And cats, giraffes, camels, and impalas. Those are the four animals that walk with one side of their body and then the other side. Cats, giraffes, camels, and impalas. The only four. It is National Cat Day for reasons I don't know. It just popped up on my feed. 24 minutes after the hour, today in history, Center College is a tiny little liberal arts college in Kentucky. They weren't very good. Harvard had not lost a game in three years. But on October 29th, 1921, in Harvard, at their stadium, 103 years ago today, Center College beats Harvard six to nothing. In 1950, the AP named this game as the greatest sports update of the first half of the 20th century. In 2005, the New York Times called it the greatest upset in college football history. In 2006, ESPN named it the third biggest upset in the history of college football. In 1996, by the way, on the 75th anniversary of this game, Center College challenged Harvard to a rematch. Harvard declined. This is the equivalent 
of a Division three school beating Texas. It's that, that kind of deal. Happened 103 years ago today. And it started on October 24th, 1929 with Black Thursday. October 25th, there was a rally. On October 26th, there was more sell-off. Then they had the weekend. And then October 28th, Monday, stocks started to get sold out again. And the big bucks couldn't prop the stock market up. And finally, on October 29th, 1929, Black Tuesday, the crash finally happens. The stocks absolutely collapse. The great bull market of the 1920s is over. The Great Depression begins. Uh, there was a lot of things that caused the Great Depression. It was just, it was just that the, when the New York Stock Exchange collapsed on this date in 1929, it just helped accelerate things along. Let's do some birthdays. Whenever this guy's on TV, I still watch. Bob Ross, uh, the painter and television host. He took up painting when he was stationed in the Air Force in Alaska. And when you're in the Air Force in Alaska, there's really not a lot to do in the dead of winter. So we took up painting as a hobby. Turns out he was a natural, the host of the joy of painting. You can still watch it on television. You can watch it on YouTube. It's out there. By his own estimation, Ross completed more than 30,000 paintings in his lifetime, but he didn't get to own any of them that he painted on television because he was an employee at the PBS station where they filmed it. The executive producers got to own the paintings. They're out there. Bob Ross, born in the state in 1942, died a number of years ago at the age of 52. Richard Dreyfus, American Graffiti, Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Of course, he won the Academy Award for Best Actor in The Goodbye Girl, Stand By Me, Always, What About Bob? Mr. Holland's Opus, the actor Richard Dreyfus is 77 years old today. The voice of not only Homer Simpson, but any number of characters on The Simpsons, Dan Castanadaletta is 67. He is the voice of Homer. He's also the voice of Grandpa, Marty Gumbel, Krusty the Clown, Sideshow Mel, Groundskeeper Willie, Merrick Quimby, Hans Molman. You got to do a lot of voices if you're going to be a voiceover artist for The Simpsons. Dan is 67 years old today. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor, that is Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. We're going to have overnight lows close to the freezing mark for the rest of this week and into the weekend, and eventually our high temperatures won't be above freezing when the dead of winter comes and your heating system will be working pretty much nonstop, kind of like your air conditioner did this last summer. It's time for that switchover, and if you think something might be a little cattywampus with your heater, your first call, Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. Still to come, an opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, an event that may very well interest you. Happens tonight at the local Televent Center at the Pipus Puppet Market. Sustainable NCW is hosting a public discussion, a panel discussion, if you will, tonight. It involves composting, recycling, anything and everything that you can do to, well, do the right thing, I guess. Marlene Farrell is the executive director of Sustainable NCW, and Rick Edwards is the incoming president. They'll be my guest when we come back. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Another fall sports season is upon us. Yes, we'll be talking about East Watt football, but also volleyball and girls soccer. Be sure and join us for the East Watt Wildcats all season long right here on the NCW Live Channel, your local TV station. Coverage is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, Together for You, and Valley Tractor. During the time I have served as your commissioner, the PUD has paid down more than $700 million in debt. I've worked hard to keep power rates low and utility services reliable. More than 80% of the county residents have access to high-speed fiber. I'm a real believer in local collaboration, in decision-making to get things done on behalf of all residents, and decisions made creating the best outcomes for the most people for the longest period. Thank you for your vote on November 5th. In Digital Media Arts Program, we learn about video production gear and editing by the combination of class projects and nonprofit work and employment. It makes things happen. Yeah. It's pretty magical. We work in the industry at the Wenatchee Road, NCW Life Channel, and the Town Toyota Center event. Every day we work with industry standard equipment for a hands-on learning experience. 
there's no place like home. Because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories and we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Downtown Wenatchee, something for everyone. Find custom floral designs for any occasion at Mountain Chick Floral. Even more wonderful plants and gifts abound in every corner in their new location at 7A South Wenatchee Avenue. The original children's shop in downtown Wenatchee. We carry the latest in quality children's wear. Come visit us for mommy and me styles and great books and toys for all ages. I look forward to meeting you soon at the original children's shop. Downtown Wenatchee, it's all here. This is Mike, Mad Dog Magnotti, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, there are two churches uh, in this community who are advocating preparing with firearms. Now, okay, I I'm not sure what this has to do with Christianity, you know, but I can choose not to go to these churches if I don't want to. But my question is, who are these folks planning on shooting? Gay men who want to take their spouses shoe shopping? <laughs> Transgender guys who want to read stories to kids? People who don't like Trump? I mean, these supposed Christians, these supposed Christians, they can dislike these folks if they want to, but take up firearms against them? Uh, what does that say about them? What does that say about the state of the church? <laughs> Gosh, this is, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. I'm Jen Mueller. Watch for my show, I Cook You Measure on NCW Life. It's part cooking instruction, part entertainment, and all about connecting over food and wine with your favorite Northwest athletes. Watch I Cook You Measure with Jen Mueller Mondays at 1, Wednesdays at 2, Fridays at 11 a.m., and Saturday and Sundays at 10.30 p.m. Right here on the NCW Life channel. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food. Freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Hello, could I have tickets please? Oh, the Discovery Center is free to visit. So you're telling me we could look at the fish for free? Yep, that's free. But how much is it to drive the steamboat? Todo es gratis. So you're telling me that we could go play on the playground? Still free. It's free. Exactly. Gratis, gratis, gratis. The Discovery Center at Rocky Beach, it's free. If your chair is comfortable and still fits, don't toss it. Reupholster it at Wenatchee Upholstery. The sky is the limit. From new upholstery in your favorite car to upgrading your seats in the boats, everything old can be new again when you call Joe. Personalize your golf cart, grandma's chair, your favorite bar stool. Trust your treasure with Wenatchee Upholstery. You come alive in the dead of winter and start work early on snow days because snowed in is not an option. The Kubota snow lineup of compact tractors, RTVs, and versatile attachments are built to move, plow, blow, and thrive in the winter. So when the snow falls, you could rise to meet it. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 84 months, plus save up to $1,100. Welcome back to the program. Congratulations, you have now made plans. For Tuesday, October 29th, you're gonna be at the local Event center at the Pibus Public Market. You're gonna be there at 6.30. You're gonna have your brain tuned in. You're gonna be feeling good because the two guests that I have here are gonna talk about not only sustainable NCW, 
But talk about recycling. There's a remarkable amount of things out there that are recyclable now that weren't recyclable just a few years ago. And if everybody does their part, maybe we can drive waste management out of business. But we love waste management. They're part of it, too, as a matter of fact. Marlene Farrell is the, uh, your title for Sustainable NCW is what exactly? Executive Director. Executive Director. So are you reportable? You're reportable to a board, of course. Thank goodness for that. And Rick's a member of the board. Are you reportable to our friend Jana, who's been on the show before? Is she like a board? Jana and I are colleagues, so okay. um, her title is now Climate Action Coordinator. So okay. we work just together very closely. And you brought a friend with you. Yes, this is Rick. He is our new, or soon to be new. Soon to be new official uh, president of the board. Yes. Cool. What's the ceremony like? Is it like a like big music? And very, that, su very subdued. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like two, a, two, a, yeah, yeah. Tuesday the 29th at the uh, local television center, Pipus Public Market. There's going to be a, a panel discussion. Uh, Sustainable NCW is putting this whole thing on. Marlene, I'll start with you. Talk about the genesis of this program that we're gonna that you're gonna be putting on on Tuesday. Talk about how this whole thing came together. Sure. Um, it just seemed like um, a good timing because there are some things are in flux right now. So we've all been recycling for a long time, but hopefully, hopefully, or at least it's been around. It's been oh, people are aware of it, um, but there's been some changes in terms of plastics. There's been some changes in terms of. Um, compost availability down valley especially and glass unfortunately is right now not recyclable in our area so we really want people to understand why at kind of all the different levels not locally but also the kind of bigger factors that affect our recycling and composting in our area so they can first of all do it correctly and know how things are changing and what we can do to help make it make more things recyclable in our community. So maybe that means we need to talk to our legislators about things to like, for instance, like how do we get glass recycling back into our area? Why don't we have glass recycling in our area? That's a, that's a good point. Um, well, there it's, it's, a, it's a very kind of complex economic issue to do with the supply and demand of glass and recycled glass. So really you have to come on Tuesday to kind of maybe learn a little bit more. So. Okay, fair enough. How are we doing, let's get a quick update. How in the North Central Washington area, our viewing area, how, how are we doing recycling wise? Is there is there any kind of metric that you can use? And I'll let you both address this that we're doing it more and better. I mean, you, how, how do you know you're making an impact? I'll let you both talk about that. Well, I, before we even get to recycling, yeah. I, I'd like to say part of what sustainable is all about is not getting you to the level where you've got something to recycle. In other words, avoiding avoiding the use of something. So a plastic a plastic drinking water bottle, it's a, a, a single use throwaway. So we're promoting, you know, use a re you know, reusable, durable steel or plastic, or not, not, not pl what? Well, preferably a steel water bottle, and not those big, you know, containers of, of water bottles from Costco or what have you. Sure. So um, avoiding something that has to be, has eventually would have to be recycled or not, mm -hmm. is is really the way to go first. Mm -hmm. um, as far as how we're doing. Um, you know, I think we're doing pretty well. We've talked about how kids are the kind of the future. So uh, if we can get the kids to be really excited about it, then they'll help push their parents to do it as well. Because, um, and I think some schools have a lot of recycling. Some of them don't as much. Um, we're really excited about, we're starting to work a little bit more with some students at Wenatchee High School who are really pushing the envelope to get more recycling and composting there. So um, we're really, and, and Pinnacles Prep, we've seen um, some efforts like that happening as well. So- Is it um, a hard sell, Marlene? Is it a hard sell? No, I don't think so. Not with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, for the for the larger, you mentioned, you know, don't go to Costco and buy the 24-pack 12-ounce bottles because you're going to drink it and you're probably going to throw it away, more likely than not, if there's not a, a, a recycling bin handy right there and it's not out of your brain, throw it away. But there's money to be had for these big corporations. If you go to Target and you go to these stores, you see a lot more of this than you ever saw before. The permanent ones, that, like you talked about, mm -hmm. the steel right. cups and the coffee cup that you use every day instead of That's throwing right. it away. You're starting, they're, they're, they're getting, they, they understand now there's a market for it. Yeah. And they're yeah. doing it. And, and yep. then on the consumer side, you just have to practice not having the disposable cup or whatever for a little while. And it can become habit. Like, oh, I just am used to putting my cloth bags in my car and having my coffee cup in my car and stuff. And then it's not, it's not too hard, right? And finding a water bottle that's convenient to carry around. I've got a nice you know, yeah. steel one that fits in my back pocket of my blue jeans. Mm -hmm. So 
if it makes you feel any better, anytime I walk the trails, either down on the, on, on, along the river or the Wenatchee Foothills Trail, everybody has one of those now. I mean, everybody does. If you're into that kind of stuff, they're on it. They're on it. Rick, you brought some props. You brought some interesting stuff. We'll start out with this, Rick, and I'm going to hold this up. This looks like your good old fashioned. Uh, it's just a palm. It's a palm sander. It's a palm sander. It's a fully and, functional tool. And this is this so, serves a different. This is kind of talk about why you brought this. So we're getting we're, ta we're talking recycling, but before you get to recycling, it's reusing or donating sharing something with a friend that you've got extras of and what have you. So I, I want to make a plug for uh, Go ahead. A, for Waste Loops Eastside Rebuild, okay. which is a, it's a, a Habitat for Humanity type store. They have a tool library. They do repair cafes. Um, uh, they're doing actually deconstruction. They've got a couple of part-time employees. They go out to a location and take down a, a pergola that has perfectly good materials. Sure. But the, so this is, I have three of these. One from my my dad, one from my brother, and this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep one of them. You don't need I'm, three. I don't need three. Well, I could palm sand them with both, I guess. But, <laughs> so, but I'm gonna take two of those to Eastside Rebuild. Um, and waste Loops effort there, and, and Beryl uh, Bills and Luke Dixon are, are the co-managers. It's a fabulous uh, arrangement. Uh, they've got lots of materials there. They've got all the tools in, in the, the tool library. You can join the tool library. Um, you can go online and see what they've got. It's a very, it's a, a it's a, it's a uh, uh, kind of pay as you, pay as you can kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then the, in the materials uh, side of it, they've got all the materials listed on the website as well. So, cool, quick, good, good plug, good for yep. those folks. Yep. Sweet. Yep. Yep. And you brought this baby, and I'll hold this up. So that's our friends from Winton Manufacturing. There. Right. So uh, we wanted to show how easy it. It is yeah. to compost if you exactly. do, do their composting. So, and people are worried about how, that it can be smelly, but um, they have, um, you put a bag in here that is a compostable bag, and then. The um, bag itself is compostable. The bag is, yes. it's, it's a green and or then, brown bag. And then the lids um, unscrews oh. so that it, the bag doesn't fall in every time you refill it with, and then, and then, and then you screw the lid on tight, and it keeps the odors really down. And then when you're ready to take it to the the, the 96 gallon cart that's located somewhere near your house, you just tie up the bag and drop it into the cart, and it's pr almost totally mess free. Exactly. So, yeah, um, my wife and I joined in, or signed up in January. It's sixty sixty dollars a year, and you get a year's worth of bags. Um, I have our can right outside the man door, right next to my dining room. And so we scrape things in, on one plate. I, I step out, I twirl this open, because I've got it up on another sure. on another uh, can. Scrape stuff in, twirl it back, done. This is super handy because it's got the stuff you can compost. Right. You have pictures of it, for idiots like me, from yep. fr a fruit that's rotted away, lettuce, what have you. Uh, meat products. Bones, meat products. Everything. Everything. Most people, you know, if it has a mother, if you're a composter, you don't put that stuff in. That's but this right. is This is totally compostable. Yep. And then right there, it says no plastic, no all the stuff that can go in there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And so it, 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 it eighty proofs it. Yep. Which so, is a great idea. So composting is kind of at the at the end of the R chain of recycling, reusing, mm -hmm. using that kind of thing. Um, and a fine vintage uh, from Kirkland brand. Mm -hmm. It's empty. Oh well, you can't have everything. Why did you bring this? Well, we, we talked about we glass. talked a little bit about glass. Um, there is a group working. Marlene and I are with uh, working with some other folks that actually have been working on it longer than we have, um, trying to solve the Wenatchee area's glass issue because 9/11 it was shut down because of the fire. Uh, Waste Loops Recycling Center in Leavenworth is shut down because of the. Uh, the strategic materials company on the west side that they were hauling glass to has decided not to accept glass from out of, out of the area. Um, so Natalie Williams and other, other folks have been working on trying to figure out, well, can we get a, a rail car on a siding? People can put glass in there and then arrange to have uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, railway, railways haul it to Kalama. Yeah, we just um, you have to collect enough in an area to make it economically viable sure. because it's yep. heavy, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can't do it in little loads at a time. So if you could get a whole rail car load at once and get it. So, we, so we'd need a bunker somewhere yeah. and then maybe some spots where people can, can take their glass. And it really has to be of high quality. So you do have to kind of have volunteers there to make sure people aren't putting other stuff in there that's contaminating it. Um, so, so there's a few, few steps, but it's not impossible. So, so talk about the... 
Richland, the Tri Cities connection. Yeah, so they are doing it successfully down there. They have they have basically kind of that model. It's called a hub and spoke model, and um, so they we are kind of in com conversation with them, but we can't really necessarily directly connect with them. But we're kind of learning from what they're doing. I don't know. If that's something you wanted to add. Do, do, do organizations like Sustainable NCW compare notes with organizations similar to yours and other locales in the Pacific Northwest? What works, what doesn't? This is what we're trying. For sure, for sure, yeah, because yeah. why would we want to have to invent the wheel yes. when we should all be just learning from each other? I mean, that's, that's, that is kind of our mantra. It's like it, the, the issues are so big that if we're trying to just kind of stay in our little area, then we're going to be not making progress as fast as we could. And it's, very, it's a very collaborative effort, and we want to be sharing information all the time. At 6.30 is when the doors open. <clears throat> the first half hour, there's going to be tables and the various people who are going to be presenting will have their own tables. You can talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. At 7 o'clock, the program begins proper. Talk, talk about the program. What can people expect at 7 o'clock sure. at the Pivus? Thank you. Um, so there are seven panelists, four are in person. They are uh, Waste Management, um, Technoplex, Waste Loop, and Winton. And then we also are having some virtual panelists who they are excited to be part of it but they aren't going to be quite in our area and that is two people from department of ecology who are in the organics management zone so that's kind of their specialty is a little bit more on the compost side and then also the executive director of zero waste washington and so that she's got more of a level at the kind of state level and they've been doing a lot of both um, some of the same type of work that we do on our smaller level uh, and also a lot of advocacy work. So it's going to be a really great panel. Um, and then we have a moderator, um, Sarah, who has, um, she works with uh, Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center. She's, so she has great um, facilitation skills. So she's going to moderate it because as much as we'd like the audience to just raise their hands and ask questions, we know that, first of all, our time is short, so we really want to kind of keep it as efficient as possible. And we're also... We want to, I don't want to say we want to protect the panelists, but we want the panelists to feel they can be honest and open about everything without potentially somebody standing up and maybe ranting about something first. Yeah. So, so we're using a moderator, but everybody is still very, it's very interactive because people will be able to give us their questions live through a, an app and or through little pieces of paper if they want to write their questions down. And then we're going to have a method to give those to the moderator and she will kind of read them off one at a time. And there's uh, Spanish interpretation that's going to happen at the same time with headsets. So we really, really want to have um, both English and Spanish speakers come to be in the audience. And then the final thing is we will have a recording right. because um, we know that not everybody can make it. And we sure. think it's going to be full of valuable information. And we will make sure that we get that out you know, within a certain amount of time after the event. Do you guys have a lobby in Olympia when the legislature reconvenes in January for their session? Do you, gonna, you gonna have somebody there saying... These are some of the issues that we want our lawmakers to address to make recycling more accessible to everybody. It's one thing to have Teneplex, formerly Dolco, involved, and they should be, and waste management, but they're doing it out of their own because they, they have a, a, a stake in the game. They're, they're committed to being here. Is there, is there any way that you can convince the people who make laws to make laws or at least push people in the right direction? We invited um, many government officials to come okay. to this event, and we, we happen to know that uh, at least four or more are going to be there in the audience. So we think that's really important. Um, and then we haven't gone to Olympia, but we have talked to government officials in our area, for sure. And we will continue to do that. And we do, we do advocacy um, through our organization on legislation that we think is really valuable in the area of sustainability. So... Um, we kind of what you, decide. It's really, yeah, influence through education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through education, and that's really yeah. the key. And we talked about this before. It's all, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a habit you just have to get. Mm -hmm. You have to have a recycling thing in, in your house, and this is where this yes. goes to. You need to have one of these at your house, so it's right there. Mm -hmm. It's a, For a lot of people, it's a matter of laziness or... or there's the garbage can, I'll throw it in there. But like you said, like at the, like the legislative level, maybe... There, I would love to see the producer responsibility laws be, you know, more strengthened. So that would mean it's not just upon us when we we, we need to buy something and it came with all this packaging. But if the producer had to kind of come up with more inventive ways to have a lot less packaging, or all the packaging was compostable, then that's a lot harder, a lot easier for us. So those are important levels of change too. Quick thing, I want to mention this: um, you can bring in your e-waste for recycling between six thirty and seven o'clock. 
Uh, so you can bring uh, old computers, old tablets, old cell phones, old e-readers, -read uh, no monitors, no printers, uh, no copiers, keyboards, all that other stuff, televisions, don't, don't bring those, something uh, along the lines of what I talked about, computers and tablets. I have an old cell phone that's doing nothing but sitting in a drawer of my house that I'll never use again. You can have it. I should have brought it. That was stupid. <laughs> Both of you, uh, answer me this question before we cut you loose. I know you're busy. Uh, what do you want people to take away from this? First of all, it's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. Totally free. And you'll get something out of it, too, which is what we really like. What do you want the people who are going to come on Tuesday to take away when it's, uh, when it's all said and done? Well, just, think, just a thought? Just yeah. a thought process? Well, one of the keys, it's even more before the recycling thought, is to, well, well, it's the basis of the recycling thought, is there's, there's, it's a three-legged stool to be, have a successful you know, circular market for some kind of material, you gotta be able to collect it efficiently, you've gotta be able to process it, sort it and process it efficiently, and there's gotta be an end market for it. And the end market's gotta be accessible you know, uh, uh, without a great deal of cost of right. delivery, or what have you. So if it's a three-legged stool. One of, the, one of those legs is off balance. Stool falls over. So that's the, so glass, mm -hmm. as far as waste management goes, is one of the legs is too short. They have, there's markets, but they're too far to go. If people would, you know, people get really frustrated about the whole recycling thing. Think of it in a three-legged stool. And we don't have the, as broad a market because of, we kept shipping everything overseas, so we don't have the uh, infrastructure the manufacturing infrastructure close enough to be able to use the things efficiently. Right. That's part of being where we are right now, right. I mean, physically from a geographic standpoint. Same question for you, Marlon. Right. What do you want people to take away from this on Tuesday? Uh, well, first, what um, Rick just said was fantastic. So I think that's really important because um, kind of connected to that, we hope that people go and kind of can be both hopeful about how things are making, we're making progress. There's more things that are recyclable and hopefully labeling is gonna continue to be more clear but also to kind of understand, to not feel guilty and do wish cycling, which is where you're like, well, I have a clamshell, it has the right number, but it's the wrong shape, I'm gonna recycle it anyways and be, cross my fingers. Well, if you are in the room and you're understanding why that doesn't work when it goes to the facility when they're sorting, then maybe you can kind of make, you can, you can be very clear about your choices when you are buying things and when you're recycling so that you're doing both things that help our environment to the best. By the way, the Sustainable NCW website is fantastic. It's got tons of blogs, tons of information. It's, a, it's very well done, by the way, extremely well done. I, I was amazed. I got pretty deep into it today doing my homework, and I barely scratched the surface. So kudos to you guys on that website. You want to close it out, Rick? I do. So we'd like to come back yeah, and absolutely. talk about things like you know, the rumor of, well, the same truck picks up my garbage mm -hmm. as my recycling. Well, that's not true. Okay. We can explain why. Yeah. Um, we'd also like to uh, note that there's, there is a an empty seat on the board of Sustainable NCW. Okay. So if anyone would like to come you know, talk to Marlene or myself for sure. and be part of that, that would be great. Yeah, somebody's got a passion and for the type of work we do, and yeah. We're, I we're, think he's gonna make a good president. Uh -huh. and, well, <laughs> and, 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 and one notch below that, this glass group that we're working with, there's only four of us. If somebody's out there that wants to help work on the Wenatchee Valley uh -huh. glass scenario, give us a call. Absolutely. Again, it is Tuesday, uh, October 29th, pre funkin at 6.30. The actual program is at 7 o'clock. It will, it will when it's all said and done, the final video will be on the Sustainable NCW website? Correct, and we'll post it on social media too. Good. So let's, let's make this a standing invite. Let's get you back here in a couple of more months, get another update. Awesome. Uh, who knows, there might be more stuff recyclable mm -hmm. in December than there is in October. It, that's the way, that's where we're going. Yeah, we definitely like so. to come back, uh, talk about organic management. Absolutely. Food waste. Absolutely. That's a big controversy right now. Good luck, El Presidente. Well, thank you. Don't let it get to your head. <laughs> no. I don't think that'll ever no, happen. No. Marlene, thanks for dropping by. Awesome. Say hi to Jana and Jenny and the whole crew there of I'm Sustainable sure. NCW. We love you. Thanks for coming by. We appreciate it. We'll be right back. Global Car Care has the best customer service in the Valley. From the moment you walk in the door, their goal is to help you stay on the road so you can keep doing what's important to you. Global Car Care certified ASE mechanics stand behind your automotive repairs. 
Right now at Les Schwab, it's the deal you've been waiting for. The Score More Sales Event. Save up to $160 instantly on a wide selection of four tires and four wheels. Plus, every tire is covered by America's best tire warranty, 60-day satisfaction guarantee, no hassle road hazard protection, and free maintenance for the life of your tires because nobody stands by their tires like we do. It's a better deal on better tires with the best service in the business. Get more from less. My name's Nick Dirk, and I've been a cinematographer photographer for over 10 years. I got my start at the Wenatchee Valley Technical Skills Center. Without the Tech Center, I wouldn't have got my first job in media production three months after I graduated high school. My name is Charlie Voris, and I own Vortex Productions. My work has taken me on exciting adventures all around the world, and I got my start at Wenatchee Valley Tech. Hey, my name is Ole Mingo, and I'm the executive director at Heirloom Creatives in Wenatchee. I am so thankful for Wenatchee Valley Tech to be able to have my dream career. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic-turned-home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect, no matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. All right, getting ready to send you on down the road on this Tuesday, 29th day of October. It is 37 degrees here in the big city. Much cooler out in the Columbia Basin. They didn't, we had some, you know, some clouds that kind of held the heat up a little bit. The, the radiant heat kind of stayed closer to the valley floor. Not so out in the Columbia Basin. It is uh, 27 in Moses Lake. It's 27 in Afreda. It's a little chilly down there. A lot of places are considerably warmer than that. We're in for a lot of sunshine today and then here comes this well-advertised uh, frontal system. We haven't been keeping this a, a secret from you. So here's what we have in store for you as far as uh, rain totals and snow and where it's going to fall. Well, snow level is going to be at past level. That much we can tell you right now. How much is hard to say. Right now they're predicting between noon tomorrow till late Friday night. Stevens could get anywhere from three to five inches of snow. Washington Pass on the North Cascades Highway is going to get even more than that, and eventually the Washington State Department of Transportation is going to have to decide when to shut down the North Cascades Highway. It's still open as of now. Also, Sherman Pass and Lookout Pass in the Idaho Panhandle, they could get some snow that could stick to the roadway. As far as us, we're going to get, get some rain. Normally, the uh, rain shadow of the Cascades protects us from considerable rain, but this frontal system is probably going to overcome that little rain shadow that keeps us fairly dry. So we're looking at widespread rain really beginning about noon tomorrow all the way through Friday morning before we finally start drying out. From the Climate Prediction Center, we are leaning below normal for next week as far as temperatures are concerned. This is your temperature outlook. This takes you from November 3rd to the 7th. They put this out yesterday afternoon, so we thought we'd share it with you. So it's, it's, it's leaning below normal as far as temperatures are concerned. As far as precipitation is concerned, right around normal. They think, you know, it's kind of a hit and miss thing, but either right around normal or maybe even below normal for precipitation as we get into the first full week in November. And of course, don't forget, daylight saving time comes to an end, thank goodness, on Sunday. We go back to standard time in the wee small hours of Sunday morning for reasons that make no sense to me. Let's get rid of this stuff. Just give us a clock. Let's not change it. Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Here we go, from the National Weather Service, the sun is already starting to get going. Pretty much like yesterday, only we're going to see a little more sunshine today. We did have a few more clouds than anticipated on Monday, but we'll see sunshine and a lot of it all day today on Tuesday. But this ridge of high pressure that's keeping us high and dry is already beginning to shift to the east. The frontal system comes in tonight with increasing clouds. We'll get down to 34 degrees. Clouds all day Wednesday. Snow level tomorrow morning at 2,200 feet. But the precipitation isn't going to start until the afternoon. So... Could be a little dicey on the passes. I think we'll be okay. It's going to start raining about noon on Wednesday. It'll be light intermittent rain Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, all day Thursday for Halloween, right on into Thursday night. Tapers off a little bit on Friday. The weekend looks fairly sunny, but temperatures below normal. That's it for us. Have a good and safe Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.